Okay, loves, it's one of those days where you get read to without seeing my face because it's not good. Um, remember that right now, uh, um, box for all of the animals has just come in and they don't know what's happening. So here we go. It's called Goodbye. When George and Julia come that night, George doesn't get his mop or his broom. He gathers up his tools and belongings while Julia runs to my cage. This is my last night, Ivan, she says, and she presses her palm to my glass. Mac fired my dad. Tears slip down her cheeks. But the zoo lady said maybe they'll have an opening there in a while. I could He could clean cages and stuff. I walk to the glass that separates us. I put my hand where Julia's is, palm to palm, finger to finger. My hand is bigger, but they're not so very different. I'm going to miss you, Julia says, and Ruby and Bob, but this is a good thing, really it is. You deserve a different life. I stare into her dark eyes and wish I had words for her. Sniffling, she goes to Ruby's cage. Have a good life, Ruby, she says. Ruby makes a little rumbling sound. She puts her trunk between the bars and touches Julia's shoulder. Where is Bob anyway, Julia asks. She looks around under the tables in my cage by the trash can. Dad, she calls. Have you seen Bob? Bob? Nope, George says. Julia's brow wrinkles. Well, what's going to happen to him, Dad? What if Mac shuts down the whole mall? He says he's going to try to keep it open without the animals, George says. He stuffs his hands in his pockets. I'm worried about Bob, too, but he's a survivor. You know what, Dad? Julia gets a gleam in her eye. Bob could live with us. Mom loves dogs, and he could keep her company and... Jules, I'm not even sure I have a job yet. I may not even be able to feed you, let alone some mutt. My dog walking money? Sorry, Jules. Julia nods. I understand. She starts to leave, then run, runs back to my cage. I almost forgot. This is for you, Ivan. She slips a piece of paper into my cage. It's a drawing of Ruby and me. We're eating yogurt raisins. Ruby is playing with a, another baby elephant, and I'm holding hands with a lovely gorilla. She has red lips and a flower in her hair. I look, as I always do in Julia's pictures, like an elegant fellow. But something's different about this drawing. In this picture, I'm smiling. And here's the picture, guys. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, do you think that might be what happens? Is I even gonna have a girlfriend? The door to my cage is propped open. I can't stop staring at it. My door, just open. The giant box has been moved and it's open too. The humans have pushed it up against my doorway. If I walk through my door, I will enter that box. The zoo lady, whose name is Maya, is here again. Click, yogurt raisin. Click, tiny marshmallow. Click, ripe papaya. Click, apple slice. Hour after hour, click after click. I look over at Ruby. She waits to see what I will do. I touch the box. I sniff the dark interior where a ripe mango awaits. Click, click, click. I have to do it. Ruby is watching, from, watching me from between the bars of her cage, and this box is the way out. So I step inside an idea. After I leave the box and step back into my cage, I get an idea. A good one. I tell Bob he can sneak into my box with me and live at the zoo. Have you forgotten? I'm a wild beast, Ivan, he says, sniffing the floor for crumbs. I am untamed, undaunted. Bob samples a piece of celery and spits it out. Besides, they'd notice. Humans are dumb, but they're not that dumb. Respect. Ivan, Ruby says, do you think the other elephants will like me? I think they'll love you, Ruby. You'll be part of their family. Do you think the other gorillas will like you? Ruby asks. I'm a silverback, Ruby, a leader. I pull back my shoulders and hold my head high. They don't have to like me. They have to respect me. Even as I tell her this, I wonder if I can ever command their respect. I haven't had much practice being a real gorilla, much less a silverback. Do you think the other elephants will know any jokes? If they don't, I tell her, you can teach them. Ruby flaps her ears. She flicks her tail. You know what, Ivan? What? I ask. I think I'm going to go in the box tomorrow. I gaze at her fondly. I think that's a good idea. And I think Stella would have agreed. 
Do you think the other elephants will know how to play tag? I love tag. Me too, I say, and think of my nimble sister racing through the brush, always just out of my reach. Photo. Late at night, Mac opens my cage. The full moon falls on his sagging shoulders. He seems smaller somehow. Bob, instantly alert, leaps off my stomach and dives under knot tag. Don't bother hiding, dog, Mac says. I know you sleep in here. Mac settles onto my tire swing. Might as well stay one more night. Your buddy's leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow? My stomach drops. I'm not ready. I need more time. I haven't said my goodbyes. I haven't thought this through. Mac pulls a small photo out of his shirt pocket. It's me when I was young. Mac and I are in the front seat of his convertible. I'm wearing a baseball cap and yeeting an ice cream cone. I was a handsome lad, but I have to admit I look ridiculous. Nothing like a gorilla. We had some laughs, didn't we, guy? Mac says. Remember when we went on the roller coaster? Or that time I tried to teach you baseball? Mac shakes his head chuckling. You had a lousy jump shot. He stands, sighs, looks around. He puts the photo back in his pocket. I'm going to miss you, Ivan, he says. And then he leaves, and he doesn't look back. Leaving. Early in the morning, Maya arrives with many other humans. Some have white coats. Some have rustling papers. They are hushed and busy and determined. Ruby enters her box first. I'm scared, Ivan, she calls from inside the box. I don't want to leave you. A part of me doesn't want to leave either, but I know I can't tell her that. Think of the amazing stories you can share with your new family, I say. Ruby falls silent. I'll tell them your elephant joke, she says after a long, pa ta a long pause. You know the one about the refrigerator? I bet they'd like that. And be sure then to tell them about Bob and Julia and me. I clear my throat. <clears throat> and Stella. I'll remember everyone, Ruby says, especially you. Before I can say any more, they roll her cage out to a waiting truck. Now it's my turn. Bob is hiding in a corner behind my pool. The humans don't even notice him. While they're busy making sure my box is ready, Bob sneaks over. He licks my chin, just in case there are any leftovers. You, I whisper, are the one and only Bob. I reach for knot tag. She is a limp rag without her stuffing. Dribbles of paint cover her fur. I hold her out to Bob. He tilts his head confused. To help you sleep, I say. Bob takes her in his teeth and slips away. Oh my God, you are crying right now, you guys? I don't even know. Look at this picture. Bob, what's gonna happen to you? Good boy. Good, Ivan. Good boy, Maya says when I lumber into my box. I hear the clicker and I'm rewarded with a tiny marshmallow. When I'm settled, Maya gives me a sweet drink that tastes of mango and something bitter, and my eyelids grow heavy. I want to see what happens next, but I'm, I'm sleepy, so sleepy. I dream I'm with Tag, and we're swinging from vines while Stella watches us. The sun slices through the thick ceiling of trees, and the breeze tastes like fruit. I'm moving. My eyes flutter open. The box is moving. I'm in the grumbling belly of some great beast, but I fall back asleep. Awakening. I awake to glass and steel. It's a new cage, not unlike my old cage, except it's much cleaner. Maya's here, and other humans I recognize. Hi there, Ivan, Maya says. He's coming too, you guys. I have three walls of glass. The fourth wall is a curtain of wooden slats strung together. This doesn't look like the zoos on TV. Where are all the other animals? Where are the gorillas? Is this where Ruby ended up? In a cage just like the old cage, still alone? Is she cold, hungry, sad? Is there anyone to tell her stories when she can't get to sleep? Missing. I miss my old cozy cage. I miss my art. But most of all, I miss Bob. My belly is cold without him. Food. The food is fine here. No soda, though, or cotton candy. Not famous. I have no visitors here. No sticky-fingered children or weary parents. Only Maya and her human come, with their soothing voices and soft hands. I wonder if I have stopped being famous. 
something's in the air. Endless days pass. And then I notice something. A change. I don't know what it is, but I taste it in the air, like far-off rain clouds gathering. A new TV. Maya brings me a TV. It is bigger than my old one. She turns it on. I think you're going to like this show, she says, smiling. I'm hoping for a romance or maybe a Western, but it's a nature show. One without human voices or ad. It's a show about gorillas, just being gorillas. Watch them eat and groom and play fight. I even watch them sleep. I wonder why Mac never put this channel on. The family. Every day I watch the gorillas on the TV screen. It's a small family and an odd one. Just three females and a juvenile male with a silverback to protect them, without a silverback to protect them. They groom each other and eat and sleep, then groom each other some more. They are a contented group, placid and good-natured, although, like any family, they do bicker from time to time. Excited. This morning, for some reason, there is no gorilla show on TV. Maya and the other humans are excited. They chirp like birds at dawn. Today's the day, they say. I've watched many humans watch me, but never have they looked so happy. Maya goes to the wall of wooden slats. She grins goofily. She pulls a string. What I see? Gorillas. Three females and a juvenile male. It's the family I've been watching, but they're not on TV screen. They're on the other side of the glass watching me, watching them. I see me. Lots of me. Still there. I cover my eyes. I look again, and they are still. There's the picture of them. And I'm going to stop there, guys.